Uh, we just drove up Highway 6, and it says on the sign over here, Monk Hollow ATV track or system. And there's a <coughs> mechanism here to drive your ATV over. But anyways, we are going to hike up to Teep Mountain. I think it's three and a half miles one way. But we'll find out. Might be a little bit more. Here it says. Uh, to get to uh, 70 is 3.25 miles. And then it's probably about another quarter mile from there to the summit of Teep Mountain. a lot of this conglomerate rock around here. It's pretty cool stuff. The view of Spanish Fork Peak, what I call the backside, the east side, over Spanish Fork Canyon. It's pretty nice. I believe these trees here are called juniper trees. Doesn't look steep in the video, but this is quite steep. I think I could have driven a truck up here, but of course it was gated, so no point. Plus it would have been hard to turn around. Spanish Fork Peak again. And there is a little bit of snow on the road now and then. Just a dusting, nothing to worry about. These are the same power lines that run over Billy's Mountain. That's the trail I've been following, 202 ATV trail. Having just crossed under the power lines, came to a junction here for uh, Nold's Trail. I think I saw that from the paved road that goes up to Strawberry. It's got the uh, latitude and longitude on there. And here it says I've gone one mile from Route 6 and then to get up to 70 which is a drivable way in a truck, I think, well, it used to be. I got another 2.25 miles, and then from there about a half mile to the actual summit of Tent Peak. Steep and steady. Probably is a good thing I didn't, I wasn't allowed to drive my truck up here because it gets pretty rough and it stays pretty uh, steadily steep. And that's part, and at times quite narrow. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have made it through here with my truck. I would have had to go into those bushes because these rocks are way too big. So that wouldn't have been good. All right, the radio tower on top of Teet Mountain just came into view. Let's see if I can zoom that a little bit. There it is. The view to the west, southwest a little bit. And over here, I'm looking pretty much south right now. That's the opposite side of Spanish Fork Canyon. That might be the Strawberry Ridge right there. And we get to go down a little bit here. And then back up to there. And uh, of course, the objective is to make it up to those radio towers up there. Highway 6 just showed up down there. Well, this uh, track I've been following, it obviously gets used because look how matted down that is. So I got to go up over this hill 
and then down into a valley and then up again and I'll be at the radio towers on Teat Mountain. All right, I've been at it for an hour and 40 minutes and here's the final push. You can see the 202 road, dirt road there. And you can see the tower behind me. So this road will join up with Fire Road 70 and then we'll wind our way up to the summit. Should be there pretty quick. Okay, approaching 70 here. It's the last few steps. Looks like it's gonna be a well-maintained road. There it is. See what this sign says? Teep Mountain. Okay, I've gone 3.25 miles, and then I still gotta get up there, which I say was at least another quarter mile, probably half mile. Yeah, I'll have to come back and drive this well graded road when it's open. I just discovered this Teep Mountain when I was on Billy's two days ago. So that's why we didn't get a chance to drive up here. It's November. Roads are closed. Coming to a fork in the road. Probably the more drivable route is the left fork, but I'm gonna take the shorter route, which is straight ahead here. That would be left, and I can see the road cutting around there. But we'll go this way, because I can see the road higher up there. All right, this last little bit's in the snow. It's kind of interesting that the deer walk up here. Those are deer tracks in the road. All right, we made it. One minute shy of two hours. I'm just standing here at the uh, door of the building. They got this interesting warning down there in yellow. Maybe I'm getting some kind of crazy radio frequencies right now. Who, kn <laughs> Who knows, hopefully not. Well, they got air conditioners up here and uh, they run off propane. There's a propane tank. There's the propane line going around the building. And down at this end, the north end of the building, they have a helipad. Kind of fun to come up to stuff like this. Pretty cool. I was wondering where the camera was. Took me a minute to find it. I like the feeling up here. You know, it's a mountain, but it, you're up on a plateau. And uh, that's got to be Strawberry Ridge there in front of me. It's kind of north east of the peak. But yeah, you're up on a big plateau. I, th I think this is part of the Wasatch Plateau. And it's got an interesting feeling to it. I like it. Mouth of uh, Spanish Fork Canyon there. Time for some lunch. You got Nebo and North Peak, then you got Loafer, then you got Spanish Fork, then you got Coral Mountain with Provo Peak, and then you have Cascade. I'm not seeing Timp. Timp is blocked by these hills. Down in this valley, that's Fifth Water, where the Fifth Water Hot Spring is. And then you got your Strawberry Ridge over there. It's interesting that there's a road there on that 
foothill sub peak there of uh, to the right of Spanish Fork Peak. And right between Spanish Fork and Coral Mountain, that peak's showing up there. That should be the Ochre Mountains. Starting down, it's about 125. It's been about 45 minutes on the top. Getting a bit muddy up here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Sink it in, dudes. Look at that. That's why the road's blocked this time of year. I'm about a half an hour into the descent. Just think this section's kind of cool, the way it goes along this ridge. You can see it down in there, going over the next section. Let's try to zoom in a little bit. All right, you get a lot of these sections. They weren't so bad going up, but when you're going down, they're just this loose, all the conglomerate rock that's broken up, and they make you kind of slip and almost roll your ankle. But something to keep in mind. It's kind of this cool section going over this ridge still. Approaching the power lines, kind of steep, loose section here with lots of rocks. This is that section on the way up that I said I wouldn't have been able to drive through because these rocks are so big and the trees are so close. It's tricky walking, especially when I'm trying to film. All right. Been hiking down for one hour and we have made it back to the crossing underneath of the power lines. So this last mile from the power lines down the road, much easier walking. That's why I kept saying I could have driven up here. I think if they didn't have it gated and made it accessible only to uh, ATVs and stuff, then a person in a four-wheel drive, stock four-wheel drive, could drive as far as the power lines. And I think that's probably the purpose of this road was for servicing and putting in the power lines. But beyond that, it was too rough. And too narrow. Be down in a few minutes. I can hear Highway 6. There's my truck and all the cars going by on Highway 6. Backed out the truck. Took an hour and a half to come down. Get these muddy boots off. All right, that was a good time. That was, that was well worth it. So, hey, thanks for watching. Enjoy your adventures and have a great day.